Hello Ven, I hope you are doing well. This is a quick guide on how to complete the Lightblade Grandmaster Nightfall. I will first show you our loadouts followed by the strategies. Timestamps are in the description below. This Grandmaster contains barriers and unstops. There are Arc and Solar Shields within the GM with a threat being Arc. At the time of a recording, the surges were Arc and Strand. This could be different for you depending if you do the GM on the week it comes out or later on for your Conqueror title. So always double check where the surges are and match your subclasses and weapons to them. Moving on to loadouts, we had a Warlock running Cataclysm combined with Nezarek Sin for increased ability regen. The Hunter ran Silk Strike for clearing adds along with 6 Coyote for additional grenades. The Titan ran Sentinel Shield for ad control combined with Second Chance Gauntlets for extra grenades. Moving on to weapons, the Warlock ran a Wish Ender for stunning barriers and a Glaive for ad control along with a Machine Gun for ad clear. The Hunter ran Quicksilver for stunning barriers and a Fusion Rifle for stunning unstops combined with a Machine Gun for ad clear. The Titan ran a Scout Rifle for stunning unstops along with a Glaive for ad control. Finally, they had a Thunderlord for damage and ad clear. Now onto mods, starting with a class item. Run any of the mods for help reduce your ability cooldowns when using different abilities or run powerful attraction to help collect nearby orbs. You could also run the mods proximity ward and healthy finisher to get health back along with an overshield when performing a finisher. For leg armor, you can run mods to help with your ability regen when picking up orbs of power. You could also run scavenger mods to pick up additional ammunition when picking up ammo bricks. For your chest armor, run a concussive dampener to help reduce incoming damage from grenades and the barrier's explosive damage. Also run an arc resist mod because incoming arc damage is increased by 25%. For gauntlets, run any mods that boost your ability regen or create orbs of power. Finally, for the helmet, I suggest you have a heavy ammo finder mod on, along with some ashes to assets to get you super back on grenade kills. These are the loadouts that we used. Either copy them or use them to make your own designs. You do not need the same loadouts, subclasses or characters that we have to complete this GM. With that out of the way, let's get straight into it. Once you load in, run down the stairs into this large area. Start by shooting the boss at the back of the map on your right side and be careful of its explosive attack. After a couple of hits, the boss will despawn. There are two barriers amongst the adds here, but you do not need to kill them for platinum. You can run around the left side all the way to the exit and completely skip them. As long as one person runs through the door, the remaining adds will despawn. Up next, you have a first room, and if you don't do it correctly, you can be facing multiple light bearers at the same time. So this is the strat. In the center will be two barriers and a light bearer, along with a bunch of acolytes and two wizards. Kill the wizards first, and then use the high ground to focus on the barriers in the middle of the room, but try not to kill too many acolytes. If too many die, a light bearer will spawn next to you. Kill the two barriers that will either be in the middle or on the ledges. Then focus on the light bearer next, which too will either be in the middle or on the right side ledge. Once done, kill some acolytes and get ready for the light bearer to spawn on the top side. With it will also come a wave of thrall that will spawn in the middle, so focus on that and the light bearer. Afterwards, once again, begin thinning out any remaining adds which will spawn in the third and final light bearer in the middle along with two arc shielded knights. If you have any supers, use them here to really control them adds in the middle, otherwise you can always fall back into the hallway behind you at any moment to lure the knights away. Once done, carry onwards to the barge area. On either side of the barge will be a barrier champion waiting for you, so either split into two teams or take them out one by one. Once the barge begins to move, you will slowly approach ads on either side and the Shrieker at the back. Snipe them along the way and focus on the Shrieker once it opens up. At this point, the barge will stop and to progress it, you will need to get two charges, one from either side. On each of those sides, next to the charges will be a light bearer, and as soon as you reach the top of the stairs, they will activate the super. Just hide at the bottom of the stairs or use a glaive to absorb the shots and be careful of the suppressor grenades. Once their supers are done, go ahead and peek the top of the stairs to easily kill them. Once done, collect the charges and bank them on either side of the barge to begin progressing it forward. When the barge begins moving again, you will need to use it to reach the far end portal. In between you and that portal will be acolytes, wizards and shriekers. You can either stay on the barge and shoot them along the way, or jump to either side, left or right, and use the walkways along the walls to get to the far side. Whichever one you choose, once you get through the portal, I suggest you turn around and jump onto a balcony around you. Just make sure to stand on the edge of it and not in the middle, because there will be several waves of thrall that will jump onto the barge. Standing on the sides will allow you to easily dispose of them. Up next, you have the lantern area, and there are three ways of doing this. You can go from lantern to lantern, shooting the adds along the way, as well as the moths. This is the most risky one, because there will be plenty of adds to kill. The second strategy has you skipping all the lanterns by simply running along the right side wall all the way to the end, and this way you can skip most of the adds and moths as well. The third way is the best way, because here you can have a strand hunter grapple the way through the area to the far side. As long as you reach the far side of the area, it will despawn most of the adds and you will also lose your weighted debuff. The next cave will contain an unstopped champ, plenty of adds and moths. 
Just use the right side rock for cover to dispose of any minor ads trying to rush you, followed by the unstop champ. As you make your way up through the cave area, make sure to destroy any moths along the way and ads that might be standing above you. Once you get near the cave entrance, below you will be two minor boss ogres as well as two unstop champs. One hive and one scorn, so let them battle it out. At the back of the room will be the boss and two shriekers on either side of it. Just use this high ground to shoot down at the ads below you but keep an eye on the shriekers. They will open up every so often so use that chance to get rid of them since you are out of range of their shots. Also keep an eye on any screeps because sometimes they will try to jump up towards you from the bottom. Once most of the ads are dead, the boss will eventually despawn. You are now in the boss room. There is a strat here you can use to keep the ads in line to not get overwhelmed. Use the walkways around the room to begin damaging the boss to remove the first bar of health. You will have cursed thralls spawning underneath you and every time you remove a large portion of the boss's health you will be rushed by thrall. Now you can cheese the boss somewhat by having one person jumping from the walkway over to the center platform back and forth. The boss will follow you to and from without shooting anyone. Just make sure to swap sides as soon as you see him jumping towards yours. When one bar is removed, the boss will teleport to the middle and a light bearer along with two arc shielded knights will spawn in. Focus on the light bearer and kill one arc shielded knight but keep the other one alive. When they die, the two barriers will spawn right after, so it is safer to kill the light bearer in one night whilst keeping the second alive to collect orbs and ammo. Once you are ready, kill the last knight and focus on one of the barriers together, using your supers to get rid of it ASAP. From here, one person can distract the boss who will be chasing you whilst the other two work together to dispose of the last barrier. Afterwards, you can go back to damaging the boss until you lower him down to exactly half of his health, at which point another two barriers will spawn in. Again, focus on one together to get rid of it within its spawn and then one person distracts the boss whilst the other two get rid of the last barrier. From here, you can go back to lowering his health until the boss reaches the last bar. A final light bearer along with two arc shielded knights will spawn in. It doesn't matter which order you kill them in and you no longer need to keep any alive. Once done, go back to damaging the boss and use this time to collect your supers and any remaining ammo. When he reaches the halfway point of his last health bar, the final two barrier champs will spawn in, so again, Kill one together within its spawn, then one person distracts the boss whilst the other two focus on the champ. When they die, just throw everything you have left at the boss to kill it. And there you have it, but that's how you complete a light blade nightfall on Grandmaster difficulty. If you have found the guide to be helpful, then please like, share, and post a comment. Don't forget to subscribe for more Destiny 2 guides. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.